being in Quincy, you're kind of out of the zone of an easy cab ride if you stay out later than the 12.30 um, last train or whatever it is. Did you guys investigate if that would be a deterrence trying to get uh, young professionals and grad students to move out that far out um, or investigate kind of keeping the train running later or options to make sure that you're um, keeping the late night habits of young professionals in mind when trying to develop that? Um, we didn't actually consider that particular. I, I personally have always thought it to be a bit of a problem. But in this particular um, circumstance, we really were focusing on the downtown mm -hmm. as being the place where people would spend time. Not that they're not going to go to Boston. That's silly. But we thought that um, with the amenities that are offered downtown, that there wasn't as great a need to you know, address that particular issue. Yeah, the city is envisioning a much more a much different downtown Quincy than is there right now. And they sort of envision their own set of bars and restaurants and places that they would want to keep you there. So which is, you know, it's a little bit different. They got a long way to go. They do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, are you familiar with, with Bethesda, which is right outside of Washington, yeah, D.C.? Yeah. It's sort of a satellite mm -hmm. suburb, but mm -hmm. it's kind of denser and, and about a 20-minute train ride into the heart of the city. That's what Streetworks has redeveloped in the past. And, um, and I think that's sort of their, that's part of their kind of vision for Quincy is that it's its own place where young professionals would feel comfortable going out and getting a drink and having dinner, as opposed to necessarily commuting to downtown Boston. Except for work. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question about uh, your community outreach strategy. Uh, and in particular, I know parking can be a hot button issue. I know you mentioned that Quincy College um, didn't require any additional parking, uh, and you didn't see much opposition uh, in, was it a, a DOT meeting? It was a mass stop. Yeah. Mass stop meeting. But I'm wondering what the larger set of local residents and businesses, uh, how they feel about a reduction in, in parking capacity, because I feel like it can be skewed when you get to that side of the car. Yeah, I agree. We didn't get the whole picture. We just presented the information we were able to get. We weren't uh, tasked with surveying a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in addition to that, the, the streetworks sure, project the is going to put about 5,000 <coughs> parking spaces within their project, and within their own garages. But we were focusing more on the commuters from the station because our research showed that if there's a parking structure that's more than a quarter mile away from the station, people aren't going to use it for commuting purposes. And the streetworks garages aren't necessarily going to be priced for commuters, which is something the MBTA was very adamant about that if pricing's not right for commuters, they're not going to park there. They've seen it in the past where they've upped their prices by a dollar or two, and parking has dropped drastically. So the parking at the site, the station itself, we felt that it was needed because the, the surrounding parking really isn't going to accommodate what a commuter is going to be looking for. So, I think what came out more from some of the, the meetings that we went to was that folks were interested in not just having it be car centric. I mean, they really want the whole downtown to be pedestrian friendly and bike oriented. And this site isn't part of the street works redevelopment. So I think they want to make sure that the, like the infrastructure and the green space outside of it at least is accommodating. <coughs> actually, I actually do have a question because I actually don't remember the answer. Why wasn't the Quincy Center to stop the car? No one knows. <laughs> 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 This is good on very good presentations. Can you address that question? Any opinions? Yeah. I think it was probably too much of a headache for the developers to sit down with another partner at the table. Yeah. Yeah. And the MBTA, the, the situation they're in in the state, they just didn't want to muddle everything out. Yeah. 
That's like, that's what I read between the lines of what we spoke. It was like a phase thing, like the the partner sorry, but the partnership between the streetworks and the city is being for like five, eight years. So they didn't want to bring another client to the table, so things will prolong even more. So obviously the MBTA is gonna have like very restrictive uh, uh, demands that they didn't want to deal with, but since Streetworks is more uh, accommodated to work with public entities like the city of Quincy, that they, they think they thought that the thing um, it could uh, develop faster the whole project, and also the shutdown of the station right now was something that it wasn't planned, it wasn't thought about it. It was just we uh, people were complaining the structure doesn't look good. I mean, there is concrete falling apart. They did an inspection and then. Four months later, they shut it down. So it was something from this year, the shutting down the station, and the project is way more open than that. And I also think that they thought the MBTA dam demands would be harder than they were. When we approached the MBTA, they were like, we don't care. As long as we get our parking, <laughs> you can do whatever you want to the station. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, well, that makes us so much easier. Whereas I think they were thinking, oh, we have to pay a concession fee. We have to have these rights. So I think they made a bigger deal than it was. Actually, it's interesting. Now, the streetworks developers in the city and the MBTA are discussing and sitting down at the table and coming up with ideas. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, Heather, maybe I missed this, but did your group come to a recommendation on one of the alternatives you were looking at in terms of the original size, the double the size of the space, or maximizing the air rights? We didn't actually want to pick one particular um, item. We didn't want to say that one alternative we wanted to really just pose three ideas <coughs> that um, the city could think of and work off of. Um, even when we, we presented on Tuesday, um, the idea of, of, of the city had said they had sat down and worked on a lot of these ideas, but the idea of daycare had never come up. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, oh, well, that's, a, that's a different idea. And so we wanted to just sort of give them a menu. Um, and we didn't want to say, oh, you should go with this, you should go with that. Just all of these things sort of encompass each other. And, and we were very careful to make sure that, you know, alternative two, you, you make improvements to the station, but later on, when, when the market saturation has sort of gone down, you can build over the busway. Mm -hmm. You could build up the air right? So we, we didn't want to particularly peg on one particular idea. Got it. Thanks. Um, you may have mentioned this, and I, I sort of missed it, but do you consider the possibility of, of the underground parking? The way that I, I, I heard you talk about parking, it looked and sounded to me as though you're assuming it would all be above the ground. Well, the, the structure, the, the garage where it is now, is above the tracks. Uh -huh. So they're going to be demolishing it, but the foundations are still going to be usable. So it made more sense to just kind of build where it is already. Because you wouldn't have to, because really the only other spot to put it would be underneath the busway. And we felt that th that might be a, too disturbing to service uh -huh. to really use that as a viable option. So uh, this is a great job, I think we've done a great job of laying out kind of the, the, the suburban issues as places urbanize increasingly. And since uh, so Professor Bluestone is not here, I'm going to ask a housing question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is the kind of the, the, the difference between what will be built affordable versus market rate. and then. I'm increasingly interested in kind of this micro apartment phenomenon and whether or not you evaluated the prospects for that or or what do you think the prospects are for it? Because this is an idea that's kind of really been floated around Cambridge as well. So I'm, I'm wondering if you got any feedback about that. Well, the, 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 the housing in Quincy, um, it's, it's relatively affordable, for example. <coughs> when we looked at the, the rents in the vacant apartments, was significantly higher than the rents in the occupied apartment. So we saw that there was a plethora of availability at the higher end of the market. With Streetworks coming in and building even more higher end housing, there are certainly places where people can live affordably in Quincy, but for the people that really want to live downtown, we wanted to create a more affordable option than what Streetworks may be proposing. In terms of the micro apartments overall, it's still, as we know, relatively new, it's happening, it's developing now in San Francisco, in New York, and potentially in Boston in the Innovation District. But the million dollar question is, especially in Boston recently, is whether or not they'll be priced
affordably because the rents, you know, in general, rent the, the uh, proportion is 25% of your gross income. So somebody would have to earn $75,000 a year in order to afford one of the micro apartments in the innovation district because they're estimating rent at about 1500 So that's sort of the million dollar question and that's where we think that Quincy has an advantage over Boston is that we can make those less expensive than they would be elsewhere. And the, the Streetworks project doesn't include a, a component of affordability. They're not, the Streetworks developers are not putting the affordable units on site in those 1,200 units, but they are making payments to the city's trust fund. So you say that there's an increase in ridership at like Quincy Center. Is there any data on like who those riders are and like is there a reason you think that they would like be driving to the station instead of like using other modes? The, the, the data that we were able to get for the actual parking numbers, um, the MBTA only had data up to 2008 for, for the garages and capacity, and the ridership data didn't go past July of 2012, which is when, which is the month that the garage was closed. <coughs> so there was really a big gap in, in the, the data that we were able to collect and the data that we actually need and that the city's going to need and that the is going to need to make it a, 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 like an accurate decision on what to do with the station. As for who those extra 2,000 riders are, we, we really didn't get into into figuring that out. Um, it, it really wasn't as important to us as the fact that they were there to begin with. And, sorry, just, just to comment, um, also for for the ridership that we looked, we also tried to look at, um, the ridership was specific for the rapid transit system for the MBTA station. Um, but also we tried to get some data out of buses because we have 15 bus routes. But the bus uh, data was very scarce and we couldn't correlate, I mean we couldn't get make, make any suggestions. But, uh, but the feedback that, that we got from the MBTA is that ride, bus ridership is increasing due time. Because um, the way that they count ridership for buses is very different from the way that they count uh, ridership for the rapid, rap, rapid, rapid transit system. So there's like an estimate that we didn't have much into account, so we didn't even present it. But the idea is that ridership is increasing, and the fact that downtown had some capacity uh, for parking, and the other stations has other capacity, the users for the parking spaces just fill those spaces up. So our idea is that once the, the, um, once the station is there, um, that we will attract them back, or we will try to attract them back to the station. So. Um, related to this, you showed the trend in ridership increasing, um, but I only recall seeing <coughs> one number for um, uh, user, uh, the user rate at the station at 70%. Do you know what the long-term trend of, the, of parking has been at the station in relation to the ridership? Um, are, those, are those increasing at the same rate? Are they, is, is one staying the same while the other is increasing? Is it going down? And do you have any or does the T have any um, kind of projections of that in the future? And did and did the increase in downtown housing? Do you, do you think the increase in downtown housing has any effect on um, parking rates? People who normally would drive to Quincy Center, who live in other parts of Quincy, may move to downtown Quincy and not need to park there anymore. Right, but we, we also think that with all the additional office and retail space in the area, that you're going to have more people coming to the area who, who wouldn't normally be there anyway or who are going to now work there or are going to want to come there to play. So that kind of, those numbers, I mean, I could sit here and, and say that and you could sit there and, and say the other way and I, you, neither of us would be wrong. So, um, but in regards to how ridership and how the, the garages, the capacity of the garage, um, we really, the, the data for the garage was very scarce and there really wasn't enough of it for us to kind of put them next to each other and kind of get a, a feel for how they correlated. Or mm -hmm. so we 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 really we couldn't do that based on what the MBTA had available for us. I saw that actually. What are, what is Streetworks pricing its parking at? Right. Well, see, we don't know it's that. Very secretive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you, what they are keeping it. Well, that's an interesting question because if you build a new garage at Quincy Center that's priced below the Streetworks, there's going to be a bunch of those folks. Well, well, you, we, was, we got that question during the pre presenting to the clients, and the idea that we went through the size of the parking spaces was 
regarding to commuters, and that will take all the space of uh, peak hours. So in <coughs> some sense, if people are just going to the downtown, are not gonna affect them, because they were saying like, why are you putting more spaces? You're just gonna compete with the parking spaces that we're providing. But since we are, we're trying to answer the demands of our, the MBTA that is our client, right. and being a transit authority, it must demand parking commuters. So that is something that they have to kind of deal with. I don't know. If and then in Street Works didn't like when we were talking about more parking, they obviously because they want their garages to be utilized. So right. it's, they're going to be butt heads on that. And and also regarding to the capacity of the garden, I mean, we looked at some data that due to time they were decreasing the mm -hmm. utilization of the Quincy Center. But um, we got some reason for that was um, they increased the the fare for the for the so <laughs> they saw like a thirty per between fifteen and thirty percent utilization of the of the garages and also the deterioration of the parking structure mm -hmm. gave the feeling of the to the people that the structure was so badly I was insecure because in some spots they got like concrete falling on their cars or <laughs> they wanted to they didn't know if the structure is gonna just bury their car so people stopped using it and we we go with that train of thought that why it was it for closing the garage. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't find any complaints either about when the garage shut down. Like we looked into, try, like City Hall was like, we got no complaints. Uh, the transit <laughs> MBTA was like, we have maybe five. So like we we and we talked to Patriot Ledger and, and a whole bunch of other sources and really really couldn't find any citizens complaining <coughs> when they shut the garage down. Really? So it was, it was very, it was really necessary because people were, were like relieved. They were like, oh, thanks for closing that because. You know, we didn't want to get hit with falling concrete. So, like, that's how bad it was. So, we really couldn't find many people who were upset about it. Pulling up a few complaints that I could look at at the team, there was actually compliments on thank you for closing that garage. That that was actually the actual feedback we received. But nobody complained about the missing capacity. Well, yes, some, but not enough, because since it was seventy percent, you were like around 600 people using it every day. Uh -huh. So since we saw that in 2005, there was capacity for people to park in downtown and it was capacity to park in the other stations. Uh -huh. So there were no complaint to get it because we also tried to ask the police department in, in Quincy to see if they had like uh, the citizen, the residents that the people were parking on the streets or they were putting more parking tickets, but we didn't find any trend. So what we think is that they find a way that they didn't bother anybody and we attach that into the ca the actual capacity that the, this current downtown has for parking. And yet the, the, day. The, the partnership group, I think you mentioned the, uh, that the, um, the, T, the T wanted the minimum 500 spaces at mm -hmm. this garage. So how do they justify that, especially in light of the, the shutdown? We think it's arbitrary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ar <laughs> arbitrary? <laughs> really? Like, I don't know. <laughs> We're not honestly, it would have been There's no formula for. No. <laughs> there's no formula for parking. The operations guy was like, "Yeah, 500 sounds good." He's let them Who currently gets the revenue from the park, or who was getting the revenue from the parking? The MTA. So this was not part of the revenue that they've sold off. No. No. If the city decided to build a garage, they would get the revenue. And that was that what's interesting is that what we heard from um, Mark Boyle at the when we presented was he was very concerned about the pricing of whatever garage gets built there. And my understanding is that there's going to be a parking management authority that's created essentially for the new street works and city owned garages. And so if this is also a city owned garage, presumably it'd be part of that parking management authority. So I don't know how much control the MBTA is really going to have over the pricing of that garage if they've given up their <coughs> control in terms of they don't want to rebuild it. And the MBTA doesn't believe that they'll make enough revenue to justify building a garage. Mm -hmm. Who gets the revenue from the other <laughs> the garage farther down the line? Is it the teaser that they sold out of? Mm -hmm. See, one of the things that people actually. should understand, the T is one of its desperation moves recently, actually sold the future <laughs> revenue from its most of its parking 
and has used that to collateralize a set of bonds, so they don't own it. So they can't compete with any other parking garage that they've sold off the revenue to because they would be undermining the revenue stream that they promised to the people that they sold the revenue to. So the T has very odd incentives right now <laughs> <laughs> on the issue of parking. And that is important to know. Like I don't know if we talked about the proximity of the under garage. Like it's it's pretty close. It's like a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and, and, and by <laughs> definition, people who are parking are in cars. So a mile, no, but I mean a mile or two is not a big difference if you're already in a vehicle and it's, you're, it's the same cost on that red line. It's not like it costs a different amount to board at one station than another. So That's great. Um, same street. There's, it's kind of an interesting place because I don't think anyone actually really wants parking there. If there hadn't been a parking garage there, I don't believe there would be a conversation about building a new parking garage because it's like the city doesn't really want it, park service doesn't really want it, and you know the other people who are building parking garages definitely don't want it, and the T, whoever's running their parking one station down does not, but there was this garage there, so, you know. Uh, I just want to sit all three groups. Um, they were really nicely structured uh, presentations that really showed your careful thought on all these thoughts very well. Um, and one thing I was sort of puzzling through in, in retrospect was, was um, well, one thing I think you all did really well is provide the city with some sort of intermediary solutions that might allow for this market growth and market absorption to happen. And kind of let the city sort of do something without jump, putting the jumping in completely. Um, but I, one thing I was puzzling through is how mutually exclusive sort of some of the options that you were presenting. It seems like one, well, one thing that caught me in the, in the vision group and the intermediary realm was this idea of moving the busway to the, to the, to the deck uh, on top of the tracks um, and, uh, and building some polio type of service services uh, there and some of the partnerships that would allow for that came up as well. I'm wondering, like, can you build a 500 car garage in the land space? Like, what does a 500 car garage look like? Does it have to be over that? Is it, is it big enough that it has to be over that whole deck? Of option to move if you if you need a five hundred car garage. Well, yeah. well, I mean, I guess you essentially you want to design it, but right, so you can um, just you can have more floors. Uh -huh. um, it will cost more money. Right, but and then the question is, if people if people are less inclined, like if that's prime real estate in the downtown, you know, would, why would you put a parking garage at ground level when people so easily sort of drive up into those and retail kind of doesn't. Right, so I'm curious if you put a garage and the kind of service centers that they were talking about in just the one structure. In just one structure. Yeah, um, people like to put in those multi usage structures, like putting the retail on the first few floors and then putting the garage on top. Um, that can be done. That can be done with going with their group, like putting the bus top in, on top of the, uh, the tracks or the deck of the tracks. Um, the, p the point where the bus has actually had the bus hub can be redeveloped. I think that's one of the points that they put out. They have like almost the same amount of land, like parallel to the township station. So that area could be built, yeah, without any issues. But that is a decision that they have to make uh, um, if it is cost effective or not. I, I, I sort of, <laughs> I sort of point out. I think if the if the imagining is to put decking over the tracks and move the buses there, that that would need to be done in conjunction with a private development. Um, because otherwise it would have to be essentially the MBTA who would pay for that. Um, so unless it was unless it was a part of a larger redevelopment of the site, I don't think it would happen kind of on its own. As, as our proposals, I took it as a uh, a la carte kind of options that you kind of mix to match. Our number one matches with the uh, vision groups number one which matches with number two. So you kind of, the city was able, should be able to pick what they want and see how to make it work with the other key parts. I think we have uh, time for one very quick question. Is everybody already hungry? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'll yeah, go. Quick question. The <laughs> giant towers of expensive uh, apartments, I think Baxton <laughs> owns them right there. Are are they being talked with at all about contributing to this project? Because they're half empty. They're the ones that are half empty, right? 
So I, you would think of like a big development or to make everything all walkable right there. Well, it could be possible. Like and then, I'm sorry, Bring it along. More they're building giant towers, and then at um, the New Balance station, they're also building more apartments, and they're contributing that way. But according to Mark Boyle, it's usually about fifteen million dollars, which doesn't cover the entire cost of the station. So there is. But are you are you talking about? Are you talking about other surrounding development that's not on the site? I'm telling you, well, directly in front of the, the T station, what, right next to your, your yep. park and in between the Church of the Presidents, there's three towers there that are really one tower and then right into them. So uh, it's, it's a great bottom. idea. Part of it is that you have to extract those kinds of things from developers before you let them build it. Yeah. So, you, you know, if, if they're interested in developing something right downtown close to the T station, then, you know, if you're going to withhold density bonuses or permitting or zoning or anything like that, that's when you get your concession fees from the developers. I think part of what's challenging about having private developers contribute to, to development on this site is that because the rest of the downtown has, like the surrounding area has really already been promised and permitted, the, the potential to extract private money for the redevelopment of the site is really limited to what gets built on this site. Professor Basso, I have one question. last question. The single thing that surprised you most that you discovered was the entire project. Anybody? That the MBTA was willing to give up its stake so easily. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm asking. Um, I, was, I was a little surprised that there were less complaints about the parking, you know, because mm -hmm. at 70% capacity, where did all those people go? I think, uh, I think there is part of me that thinks people think it's just temporarily, that it's like as we speak being renovated and it's gonna open any day. <laughs> I don't think that most people know the extent of the fact that it's there are no plans to bring it back and that could be the reason why there's fewer complaints. I seriously thought with the Quincy Center College being nearby that there would be tons of parking problems and issues. I'm sure you all know that parking is very hard over here. So I was like, oh, it's gonna be a problem. No, they're good. <laughs> That's because we asked them if they wanted to contribute money. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, one thing I wouldn't say that I'm surprised by, but I think I said this in the very first class, I'm very scared by all of this development because as everybody knows, the red line has a lot of trouble and it's the oldest fleet and you desperately need new cars. And if you're putting $1.6 billion in de development down in downtown Quincy, we just don't have enough trains. Like, I just... That, that I, that's always been in the back of my head, and even Mark Boyle had brought that up on Tuesday when he presented, so. But I also like the fact that Streetworks said that they would not be doing this without the station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, I mean, that, that right. was a bigger <coughs> that they were talking about how sub suburban, sur suburbs are struggling to stay relevant as more people our age are moving towards cities and wanting shorter commutes. And that the fact that there's a T station there is what sold them on Quincy versus other towns. And this project definitely got me thinking about, I'm such a housing driven person that it got me used to seeing, you know, contributions to affordable housing funds and, you know, inclusionary zoning so that we have workforce housing when you're doing large scale redevelopments. But, you know, I, this really made me think about, well, transit infrastructure and the fact that that's decaying, but we're just as reliant on transit infrastructure as we are on workforce housing. So, you know, why don't we have those kinds of concession fees and development funds? Great. Thank you again for coming. <laughs> <laughs>